For the last two years, I spent eight to 16 hours a day in this workspace, painting minis and making videos. In that time, I've learned quite a bit about what makes a painting space great for me, and I've made quite a few changes along the way. So today, we're gonna take an in-depth look at what makes my ultimate painting setup. All right, let's dig right in at the most important part, and that is the desk itself. Now, to me, I wanted something that was a little bit higher, so I actually went with prefabricated kitchen cabinets for underneath all of my desk here. And then I just took two 16-foot lengths of laminated kitchen countertops, and I cut those to size and used those for my actual painting countertop space. I like laminate because it's heavy duty and it's gonna be able to withstand some dings and scratches and all sorts of stuff like getting super glue stuck to it and still just scraping it off, as well as it being pretty cheap. A great way to keep our countertop off the floor and to give us a bunch more storage are these prefabricated kitchen cabinets. Now you may think that by using a kitchen cabinet height, we are gonna actually be at a disadvantage because it's gonna be so much higher than a typical desk, like a drawing desk or a school desk. But for our uses, I actually think it's really, really valuable. But you need to have a chair that's gonna allow you to get up and down to the right height that you need for the job that you're doing. For miniature painting, I think it's important that we keep good posture as much as we possibly can. And I find that a higher table height helps with me a lot. In fact, I can sit up pretty straight and just keep my wrists or my forearms rested right here on the edge of the table and not ever have to worry about getting tired or getting hunched over. But when I need to do some video editing, I just have my undermount keyboard come out like this, boost up my chair, and I'm comfortable for that. As well. Speaking of chairs, one of the most expensive pieces of gear that I actually have in this entire studio is my chair. It's a Herman Miller Aeron, and I know these things are crazy expensive, but I thought if I'm going to invest in anything for long-term miniature painting and video editing, it's what's going to keep my back straight and out of pain. And so yeah, there's a lot stupider things in the miniature hobby that I spent money on. When it comes to organizing what's on my counter space, what's in my drawers, and what's on my walls, I found the most important thing is that the things that I'm using the most often are closest to me at the painting desk. That means that right next to where I sit, all my brushes are here. All my clippers, all the things that I use the most often are right next to me. The next drawer down has become a bit of a catch-all and I need to seriously go through this thing one of these days and reorganize. Everything from my 3M double-sided tape to my green stuff, epoxy sculpt Q-tips, little things of super glue, Mod Podge Dimensional Magic, can never have too much of this stuff. A thing of chapsticks. It's like sometimes you want to put a little chapstick on your green stuff before you go over it with the green stuff roller to get that texture you want. This stuff will keep it from sticking. In this final drawer closest to my painting area is where all the chemicals and adhesives are in here, everything from thinner to glue to plastic cement. I've got alcohol in here. I've got mineral spirits in here. I keep all of those things right here because I use them all the time, but I kind of want to keep them all together. They're nice and organized in this big, deep bin. The further away we go from the painting cockpit, the more the drawers have less used items. In here, I've got things like my clay shaper tools, miniature saws, an extra toothbrush or two for cleaning out your airbrush. Oh, it looks like another file set is in here. These are all tools that are great to have and that we should probably own. I just don't use them every single day, so I don't need them right next to me in the painting area. On the top of my desk, I try to keep it clean after each project is done, but inevitably there's a bunch of things that just kind of live here permanently. Things like miniature holders, paint shakers, wet palettes, mediums, those things just tend to always have a home on top of my desk. And I often keep a handful of primed models in the corner just in case I want to try something out or show it on a patron video. I've got everything set there for me. I also find it handy to have incense burning down here most of the day. You see my dog Argus is down here with me and uh, he farts a lot. Let's talk real quick about the computer monitors here at my station. 
Now, of course, I have them here because this is also my video editing station. And I think it's pretty great to have monitors or computer screen right there at your painting area because you can always look at different people's stuff for inspiration. Check Instagram. Check all sorts of awesome artworks online or anything that might inspire you for a color scheme or an army scheme. Or maybe you want to listen to a podcast while you're painting. I often enjoy doing that. And there's a great one called Trapped Under Plastic. I hear talks about miniature painting and chicken tendies and mountain do in Plato snakes. If you listen, you too will understand what these inside jokes are about. And those of you that have a computer at your painting desk probably already know this, but this thing can be a major distraction. I often have to remind myself to be careful and not get sucked into things on the computer. Instead, to sit down and have fun painting like I meant to do when I sat down in the first place. Let's talk really quick about lighting. And I've used a bunch of different kinds of lights over the years for my miniature painting. And in fact, I'm gonna do an in-depth video kind of comparing all sorts of different options that we have in the hobby. For right now, I'm just gonna explain that I use an IntelliTech light cloth LED light for painting. And the main reason I use this nice expensive light is because it really helps for filming of painting miniatures. It's certainly not conducive to the average miniature painting setup and I have to set up this big steel bar that runs into my ceiling in order to keep it supported. Oh, speaking of lighting, I actually have two of these awesome Godox QRP70s. I use these for my talking heads of my videos to light me up all pretty like. And I also use them like over my left shoulder in the painting footage to get more kind of horizontal light coming right through the model so there's no odd shadows from the light directly above from the IntelliTech light. Today's video is brought to us by Omaze, the company with a mission to transform charitable giving. They give us a chance to win once in a lifetime prizes all while helping nonprofits make the world a better place. This sustainable approach to fundraising means that nonprofits spend less time and money raising funds and instead get to focus on serving their communities. The current awesome sweepstakes Omaze has going on could have you driving away with the world's most desired electric SUV, the Tesla Model X Plaid. All you have to do is donate to support Reverb and you'll be entered to win that sweet Tesla Model X Plaid. But who is Reverb and why is the work that they do so important anyway? I'm glad you asked. Leading the green music movement since 2004, Reverb partners with artists, festivals, and venues to reduce their environmental footprints while empowering millions of fans to take action on today's most pressing environmental issues. Working with artists like Pink, Maroon 5, Jack Johnson, Dave Matthews Band, and more, Reverb has greened over 350 tours and 6,000 concert events, eliminated 280,000 plus tons of CO2, prevented the use of over 4 million single-use plastic bottles, and supported over 2,000 family farms and 4,000 nonprofit organizations. So to support the amazing work of Reverb and your chance to win that Tesla Model X Plaid, head on over to omaze.com slash ninjaunt for your chance to win. All right, let's talk about airbrushing. I set up my desk in an L shape, so I'd have this separate area right over here dedicated to airbrushing. This way I don't have to tear down, set up, or use my regular area to get airbrush spray all over the place. The nice thing is there's actually a spot for a chair and someone's legs. If I have a friend come over, I can just move the airbrush booth out of the way and they have their own secondary painting set up right next to me. I just use a portable airbrush booth that I got on Amazon and it seems to work great. The fan is awesome when I need to have it on and when I don't, it doesn't take up that much space. I'll put a link to this thing as well as the other stuff I'm showing off in today's video down in the video description. So if you wanted to support the channel at no extra cost to you, you can pick up some of the same stuff that I use. I recently picked up this reliable uber light as well and I love this thing because I can just move it around to exactly what angle I need while I'm airbrushing and it's actually quite bright it has different adjustable settings as well as color temperature I keep it at 5,000 Kelvin because that's the same color temperature I use under the regular painting area so I know that my paints are gonna look the same whether I'm airbrushing or or regular brushing. The top drawer in the airbrush area is what you'd expect. Just all the airbrush stuff I use most often, specifically airbrushes. But what's most important for this whole area is this little tub right here. 
it's kind of silly how proud I am of this one little tub. It's so efficient to just pop this thing out whenever I want to airbrush. And I've got thinner. I've got my water. I've got my lubricant. I've got more thinner. I've got all the primers I need. I just pop this out. I'm ready to airbrush, put everything back in and throw it back down. And I don't make a giant mess of my whole workstation every time I need to prime something. In case you're wondering about ventilation, no, I don't actually ventilate this outside at all. I just bought a couple of cheap furnace filters. I put them back here against the wall and then the extra particles that make it through the filter inside this thing get stuck by this thing and then eventually I just throw these away and get new ones. They're cheap, it's easy, and as you can see, or maybe not see, the wall is perfectly clean. And right in between my airbrush station and my 3D printing station is my Coway air purifier. I recommend any high rated air purifier that's got an auto setting, meaning whenever I start airbrushing and it senses there's particulates in the air, it kicks on. Same with the 3D printer. So it knows if it needs to purify my air and then it doesn't run when I'm acting normal, which is almost never. Right around the corner from the airbrush station is my 3D printing setup here. I've got some storage under here as well, and I think I've shown you these in previous videos. But there's another thing that's really important that I'm glad I have. That would be this little treasure box right here. Inside this thing, I keep my often used tools for 3D printing. Everything from extra gloves to this carpet cutter that is great for getting models off of the build plates to all sorts of everything else that I need, including a deck of cards, because that's very important in 3D printing. The important thing is these things are all out of the way, they're contained, and I know where to look when I need something for 3D printing. Plus, it looks a lot prettier than having all those nasty gloves and resin-filled bits all over my painting space. And right below that treasure chest, I keep some weights. I think it's important that we get up every couple hours and move. Get your blood pumping, get some weight resistance training in. It's great throughout the day and I know that I can get up and then go back to work and then get up and by the end of the day I've had a bit of a workout and I didn't have to leave my nerd sanctum. Let's talk about miniature photography. Right next to my 3D printers I've got this wall. It's got a curtain rod with two black velvet curtains on it and what I do is I bring over the table that you see me sitting at in front of my videos. I pull up this black curtain Put it right over the front of the table. I pull it back so we get a nice smooth slope. And there we go. We've got an infinite black background for all my miniature painting photography. When it comes to actually taking the pictures of my minis, I just use the camera that I'm shooting this video on right now, as well as those two Godox lights I showed you earlier. Really, that's all I need to get pretty solid looking miniature photography without having to buy a bunch of extra stuff and have extra space in my room dedicated to just photos. For displaying my miniatures, I've got my handy dandy Detolf I got from Ikea about two or three years ago and it still does the trick. I've put in a string of LEDs across the inside of the front and I've used patio door padding to line the thing to keep it entirely dustproof. And I actually have plans to transform this entire wall into floor to ceiling storage and model display, but that is still in a bunch of boxes. And I actually have a new addition to the studio that's really exciting where I'm gonna display the models I love the most. These bad boys are the new miniature display cubes by artist Opus, and they've got a Kickstarter going on for them right now. They sent me a couple of prototypes over, and I can tell you, once I got them mounted on the walls and the wires all hidden, I love this. Damn it, I can't believe we made it this far into the video and I haven't even talked about paint yet. This is very important. Paint is our lifeblood. As you can probably tell, I have a bit of a paint addiction. Everywhere on my walls is paint. But I do that for a very important reason. Because if I can't see the paint when I'm thinking of a color that I want to use and look up and find the right one, I'm just never going to use that paint. And I want to use all these paints. Look how many paints there are. I should use them. And I'm not going to use them if I don't look at them and say, wow, that's a cool color. I want to use that one today. And sure, I could just stop buying paints, but what fun is that? The next new exciting innovative paint could be just around the corner and I love trying them out. All I have to do is click buy it now. As a recent example, this giant suitcase of love ugh, just arrived at my doorstep yesterday. It is 240 colors from the AK third generation line. I love these paints and so I'm excited to own all of them. Oh my god, it's heavy. And if you're wondering where I keep all of my miniatures in all of this, well I did a whole video dedicated to that and my giant pile of shame and where I keep it hidden away 
all the way around in this office. So you can check up in the top right corner of your screen if you've not seen that video yet. But there are some paints that I do not keep up on my shelves. Those are my oils, enamels, pigments, things like that, that I just keep tucked away in here nice and clean, and I know where to go to look whenever I need them. The only exception here is the Scale Artist colors here. I find myself not using these nearly as much as I'd like to because I keep forgetting to use them because I don't have a good storage method for them up on my walls. This is a cool color. Thanks for hanging out today with me and checking out my painting space. I think the most important thing is that we have a space that's both efficient so we can really get our work done well and it feels good to be in because if we're enjoying our time in the space we'll be more productive and we'll have more fun while we're there. And no matter how big or small, new or old, your painting space is, I hope that you can keep it in a constant state of change. These small evolutions over time that make it more efficient for you, more fun for you to be here, are very, very important. And before we go, I want to give a heartfelt thank you to all my amazing patrons. It's because of your support that I get to reinvest in this space, in the painting, in the filming side of it, so I can make more videos and hopefully better videos one day. But thank you, truly. So if you were thinking about supporting the channel and you're not exactly sure how, clicking the Patreon link down in the video description below is the greatest way to do so. You get some fun rewards and you get some more fun behind the scenes access stuff like we saw today. I'm gonna see you all back here again real soon. And sometime between now and then, make sure you find time in your day to slay the gray.